In this video, we are covering episode two of my Amazon FBA Wholesale series. This episode covers Amazon FBA, the fundamentals and building blocks that you need to know in order to start your Amazon FBA Wholesale business. Let's jump right into it. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new, welcome. My name is Brad Sherman and on this channel, we explore tips, strategies, and experiences that I have had that will help you start and build up your Amazon FBA wholesale business. In this video, we are covering a full and comprehensive overview on Amazon FBA. Guys, if you watch no other video, watch this video if you're thinking about getting into selling on Amazon. In this video, we are basically going to be covering everything about Amazon FBA. We're going to start high level on what Amazon FBA is, how to send your inventory into Amazon's warehouse, what that process looks like. We'll cover the fulfillment fees by Amazon. We will cover account health, managing your inventory, how you get paid, and everything in between. So this is a very comprehensive video that will outline the FBA structure for you guys. Before we jump into it, if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to smash that like button. And while you're down there, if you want to continue to follow along with me on this wholesale series, hit that subscribe button and notification bell as well to keep you up to date. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Guys, in my opinion, Amazon FBA is the fastest way to scale a business in the current times. This is because Amazon is a global logistics company, not just a retail operation. They have state-of-the-art fulfillment centers around the world that give sellers like you and I the ability to ship out hundreds and thousands of orders a day. So it is a tremendous opportunity to be able to sell on Amazon in 2022. Despite what a lot of people say regarding oversaturation, there is more opportunity than there ever has been out there. And that is what I want you guys to understand and part of my goal in this wholesale series. We are utilizing Amazon's logistics, right? The amount of orders that we are shipping out on a daily basis could not be done in-house without Amazon. So yes, Amazon charges fulfillment fees. And I hear a lot of people talk about how they're charging so much for um, certain items or their fees, their fee rates go up every year. They're actually, um, Amazon just increased their fees a bit. And I hear people talking about how Amazon is increasing their fees every year, how their fees are so high, you can't make any profit. And guys, this is just negative talk that you shouldn't listen to. It's, it's noise is what it is. It's other people who are trying to stop you from being successful with um, selling on Amazon. And you'll see that any successful seller out there is not going to be complaining about the Amazon fees because they understand that it is a factor that goes into building a successful business and it could not be done without their logistics. So let's start basic. What is Amazon FBA? FBA stands for Fulfillment by Amazon. And it is a program that Amazon has where basically anyone can sign up for an Amazon seller account and send their inventory into Amazon's warehouse and Amazon will ship the orders that customers purchase from you to the customer. So this is different from fulfillment by merchant where you the seller would be shipping those orders on an order by order basis directly to the customer. Basically with FBA, you're sending in your inventory into Amazon um, in bulk quantity. So, you know, maybe you're sending it in case packaging from your supplier into Amazon, or maybe you're sending your inventory on a pallet into Amazon. And what Amazon does is they receive your inventory, store the inventory on their shelves, and then ship the products out to customers 
when they order from your store. It's a fantastic concept that has enabled tons of businesses to scale very rapidly. The difference between Amazon FBA wholesale versus other business models and the reason why I believe it is so scalable is because with wholesale, you are purchasing replenishable products. So, you know, you might only be making three, four, five dollars per unit on an item, but if you can scale that out to 200, 300, 400 items, well, now that little bit of um, profit margin on a per unit sale is actually doing quite a large volume when done at scale. And the reason why wholesale is such a scalable model is because we are replenishing our inventory versus with retail online arbitrage, you're buying a product maybe at a higher profit margin, whereas with arbitrage, retail and online arbitrage, you're purchasing a product and you're selling it on Amazon maybe for a little bit of a higher profit margin, but you don't usually have access to replenishing that product all the time. So it might go in and out of stock, with wholesale, we're able to keep our products in stock by purchasing over and over again from our suppliers. So wholesale, incredibly scalable business model. When you combine that with fulfillment by Amazon, you have an unbelievable opportunity to scale. The way you will send your inventory into Amazon is through your Amazon seller account. Um, there's other softwares out there that you can use, third-party softwares that will facilitate um, and streamline the process of sending your inventory into Amazon. But from a basic standpoint, the everything goes through Seller Central. So let's start out with um, talking about the fees that are associated with selling on Amazon. So the fees are obviously going to differ for FBA versus FBM. With FBM, it's fairly simple. They charge you a 15% referral fee, and that's just to sell and use their platform um, because they're essentially referring customers to the product offers that you carry. With FBA, it's a little bit more complicated, and I'm including two pop-ups on the screen for you guys on a particular product um, that is being sold at the same price, and we're gonna take a look at, at a comparison between the fees that are associated with FBM and the fees that are associated with FBA. So as you guys can see from FBM, on this particular product, I am being charged $4.79 referral fee. And now with the FBM, there's no pick and pack fee, there's no order handling fee, there's no additional fulfillment fees on top of that because I myself as the seller am fulfilling that customer order. Whereas with fulfillment by Amazon, I'm paying Amazon an additional fee for that pick and pack fee. Between the referral fee and the pick and pack fee works out to almost 30%. This particular item's about 28% or so, but most items will work out to about 30 or percent or so could be 33 percent somewhere in that range um, it's going to depend on what the item is the category the size the dimensions um, the specifics just the overall specifics of the item and then you can utilize this um, and for those of you that are not familiar with what i'm looking at i'm looking at the fee comparison between fulfillment by merchant and fulfillment by Amazon, and I'm viewing this in the Amazon seller app. Once you have a seller account, you will be able to use your seller app to make estimates prior to purchasing any inventory so that you know what your profit is going to be. So I'm looking at the Amazon fulfilled side and I'm seeing that I'm making a profit of $8.97. My product cost is $18.86 and my shipping to Amazon is about 60 cents. So another great thing about shipping to Amazon and use, utilizing FBA is that when you send in bulk inventory to Amazon, they have a partnership agreement with UPS. So let's say you're shipping through UPS on a small parcel shipment, your rates are going to be very significantly lower than if you were to just send one, two units out to a customer because you're able to pack up everything into multiple boxes and send it into Amazon, and Amazon has this partnership with UPS, you are receiving 
very discounted shipping rates. Um, and then if you choose to ship on pallets through LTL, you're actually going to save even more money when shipping LTL into Amazon's fulfillment center. So on my, on my merchant fulfilled side, I'm making $16.30, but it's important to note that that is prior to what I have to pay shipping to the customer. So right now I have $0 as shipping to the customer, but this particular item is a little bit heavy and it might cost me up to $15 to ship this item to the customer, in which case the item would not be profitable. So we can see how FBA is often more times advantageous than FBM, not just from an order fulfillment standpoint, but from a profit margin standpoint as well. There are additional fees on top of what we just went over known as monthly storage fees. Um, and I'll include some pop-ups on the screen for you guys. Um, I'm not going to go into every detail about this because there's so many articles and, and um, resources out there. Amazon publishes all of this in Seller Central so that you guys can read through it. So I'll just read a, a, a quick couple of sentences here. Amazon charges monthly inventory fees for the space your inventory occupies in fulfillment centers. Monthly storage fees are calculated on your daily average volume in cubic feet. So this is the main determinant here. It's based on the size of a unit that is properly packaged and ready to ship in accordance with FBA policies and requirements. Fees will vary based on product size and the time of the year. So let's jump down a little bit here um, and we can see that when do you get charged these monthly storage fees? Typically you're charged between the 7th and 15th day of the month in the month following when the fees were incurred. So if you incurred the fees in April, you're going to be charged for them in May. As for their fee structure, it's based on a few different factors, including per usage of storage, based on the daily average volume for the space your inventory occupies in fulfillment centers. As for their fee structure, as you guys can see from the chart on the screen, this breaks down based on the month of the year and based on if the item is considered standard size or oversized, what you will be charged in terms of a monthly storage fee per cubic foot. So this rate goes up quite significantly during Q4, and that's because Amazon is limiting the storage space in their facilities and encouraging you to move product fast because there is so much volume done during this time of the year. You might find it interesting that the per cubic foot rate is actually lower for oversized items than it is for standard size items. And the reason for this is because standard size items involve more complexity in terms of shipping and shelf space and different things of that nature. So they are charging you a higher monthly storage fee on standard size items than they would on oversized. The point is because this storage fee is a monthly storage fee, you want to be sending your inventory into Amazon and selling through it as fast as possible while still maintaining enough supply so that you don't run out of stock. This is known as the just-in-time inventory principle. And it's incredibly difficult to manage because there's a lot of factors we have to consider right now, especially with the lasting issues from the COVID supply chain. So let's quickly look at this fee example of the chart on the screen that you guys can see here. Um, basically what they're doing is they're taking the fee per product, um, which equals the average daily units. As we said, one of their factors for, month, for um, monthly storage fees is the volume and how fast the item moves. So Amazon is taking the average daily units multiplied by the volume per unit multiplied by the applicable rate um, from the previous chart that we saw on the screen. So if we have a product, we're in the month of July, its size tier is considered standard. The volume per unit is 0.05 cubic feet. The average daily units in storage is 100, and it is not considered a dangerous good. The calculation on this will be 100 average units per month multiplied by 0.05 cubic feet per unit multiplied by 83 cents per cubic foot and you'll get a total of 415 in total monthly storage fees. 
So you can do this and utilize that formula for certain items if you're unsure and you or you just want to know what you're going to be charged on a monthly storage fee basis. I will tell you that, you know, we have software that's used that automatically pulls the monthly storage fees and it's not something I really pay attention to. As long as my profit per unit is there on each unit and I am selling through my inventory in a quick amount of time, my monthly storage fees are just basically going to be an additional overhead expense. The more volume you do, of course, the higher your monthly storage fees are going to be. We also have to consider long-term storage fees, which are fees that are incurred if your inventory stays in Amazon's warehouse for greater than 365 days. This is something that you guys never want to incur, and there's no reason that you should have, have inventory, especially inventory in their warehouse, for more than a year. That means you've purchased something that is not selling, and you got to go back to your buying criteria and say, why did this particular item or items not sell? Now that we've covered a bunch of information on FBA fees, let's talk a little bit more about sending your inventory into Amazon. One thing you guys have to remember when selling on Amazon is that all of their rules, regulations, and policies end up going back to the customer. Amazon is a very buyer-centric platform and they want customers to have a positive experience when shopping on Amazon and they do not want sellers to do anything that might hinder on the customer experience. Amazon has moved from being a storage company to more of a shipping company. Amazon does not want to be your storage facility in the sense that you send your inventory into Amazon, it sits in their warehouse for months, and then you know you might, might sell it months down the road. Amazon does not want that. They are encouraging sellers that once the seller sends in their inventory, they want you to sell through it fast, but still maintain that supply so that the listing is available for sale to customers. Again, we go back to that just-in-time inventory. There's a specific metric in Seller Central that Amazon uses in order to gauge how well of an inventory manager or se Amazon seller you are. And this is called the IPI score, which stands for Inventory Performance Index. There are four main factors that are associated with your IPI score. Number one is your excess inventory. Number two is your sell-through rate. Three is your stranded inventory level. And number four is your FBA in-stock rate. Those are pretty self-explanatory. If you guys are not familiar with what stranded inventory is, basically it's just FBA inventory in fulfillment centers that does not have some type of associated active offer and therefore it's not available for sale to customers. As you guys can see from the pop-up on the screen, when you go into Seller Central, you go to inventory, inventory planning, and then you can see your performance metrics. And these are my performance metrics. And as you can see, they are rating me on a scale based on each of these criteria and factors. One thing that's important to note about stranded inventory is that this sometimes happens outside of your control. So oftentimes, you know, a listing might get deleted for um, some reason, or the offer might just disappear, and it's just outside your control, right? So what we're able to do with this is you can manage this in the stranded inventory page, and you can do one of several things. You can, um, you can edit the product listing because Amazon will oftentimes give you a reason as to why that product listing is considered stranded and not available to customers. You can edit it. If you can't edit it, you can open a case with seller support. You can recall the inventory back to your location. Uh, there's a number of factors that you can do or attempt to do. Sometimes products go into stranded inventory because of high pricing errors or low pricing errors, just meaning that Amazon is considering that your product is priced too high, so they might suppress the product listing, and then consequently your listing goes into stranded. Let's jump into FBA account health. This is a big factor when selling on Amazon because you want to keep your account in very good standing. As you grow as a seller, 
These metrics are going to go into things like your buy box percentage and just overall how Amazon perceives you as a seller. Now with the FBA metrics, there's a few different factors we're looking at. In account health, you'll be able to see your customer service performance. And what we can see here is your seller fulfilled and Amazon fulfilled order defect rate, which takes into account things like negative feedback, A to Z guarantee claims, or chargeback claims. You'll also see policy compliance that shows different policy violations that happen when let's say you get an IP complaint from a, from a particular brand, or maybe a particular listing gets removed because Amazon considers it a restricted product because of, um, I, let's say, EPA regulations. You know, there's a number of different factors. Here is where you can see all of that and rectify those issues. One great feature of the account health dashboard is that you will be able to manage the claims that you do receive. So Amazon will allow you to submit an appeal or some type of documentation showing that you either accept the claim for what it is and explain the reasons why, or you explain to Amazon that the listing was deactivated in error and you submit an appeal accordingly. The third performance metric that you'll see on the account health dashboard is shipping performance. This pertains to both your merchant fulfillment and your FBA shipments. So at the top here, what we see is your late shipment rate. So you do not want to be shipping merchant fulfilled orders late. This is definitely going to have a negative impact on your shipping performance. Pre-fulfillment cancellation rate. So you do not want to list inventory that you do not have in your hands. It's very key that you're shipping your orders on time and you are not unnecessarily canceling orders. If you absolutely have to cancel an order, you are able to do so, but keep in mind, Amazon takes this into account on a rolling seven day period. So if you've shipped one order in a period of seven days, merchant fulfilled, your pre-fulfillment cancellation rate is going to be 100% if you had to cancel that order and not until after seven days will that come off of your account health. The final metric is the valid tracking rate on FBA shipments. So you want to make sure that your FBA shipment tracking IDs are all perfect. Um, there's no reason why, unless you're purchasing shipping outside of Amazon, there's really no reason for there to be a discrepancy in your FBA shipments um, in terms of tracking it, especially if you're purchasing the shipping through Amazon. Finally, we get to the point of how Amazon pays you. So as we talked about in the previous episode, episode one of the wholesale series, and this episode covered how to start a wholesale business for selling on Amazon. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'll link it up above. And we did cover a component in that video that talks about setting up your business bank account. So what you're going to want to do is make sure your business bank account is linked with your Amazon seller account so that Amazon can send you payments for your sales. Payments typically take place on a bi-weekly basis and Amazon does hold a certain amount of funds in your account from you um, in order to cover for potential returns, refunds, chargebacks, and that is something that is unavoidable. You can, however, request payments sooner than two weeks, although I don't necessarily recommend doing this because it will screw up your payment cycle, but if you have to, you can request payments sooner than two weeks. You can also work with a third party like Payability that takes a certain percentage but enables you to get your Amazon payments quicker. It all depends on what your cash flow position is and the money that you need at what particular time. Overall, guys, that is Amazon FBA in a nutshell. I hope you're still with me. And if you are, congratulations, because you just learned a ton about fulfillment by Amazon and just selling and utilizing their platform. Now, please, guys, if you guys have any questions at all about the content that I just covered, drop a comment down below. You can also make a post in the Facebook group. If you guys have not joined that Facebook group yet, I'll leave a link for it below, Amazon FBA Wholesale Mastermind. Guys, 
Amazon FBA is the best way to scale a business right now. And I don't care what anyone says about fees. Yes, there's going to be fees associated with selling on Amazon, but this is the price you pay to utilize Amazon's state-of-the-art fulfillment centers. Their unprecedented technology and their incredible logistics channel that enables your products to be shipped to customers within two days. And that is why I have always said and I will continue to keep saying that Amazon FBA, especially Amazon FBA Wholesale, is a great business to scale. You're purchasing replenishable products and you're rinsing and repeating the process, sending your inventory into Amazon. And in many cases, you don't even have to touch the inventory if your supplier ships directly to FBA. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys learned something here. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button. It really helps out the videos when you do that. And if you guys do want to stay up to date on the continued content and series that I will be coming out with, hit that subscribe button and notification bell as well. In the next segment, we will be covering episode three, and this will cover Amazon FBA wholesale specifically, including the skills and demands of the business. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you next time.